Hey, what's up everybody? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel, and it's time for another episode of What's Spinning. Uh, first off, Happy New Year to everybody. I hope you guys had a good holiday and uh, a, a great new year. I know I did. Um, a lot of cool stuff going on for me and my family here in 2017. So while uh, 2016 got kind of rough for a while there, I'm really looking forward to uh, a good 2017. So uh, again, Happy New Year to everybody. And uh, uh, so let's just kind of jump in. Uh, in the background, uh, we're listening to uh, Metal Church Live. Um, I've loved Metal Church since I first heard them in 90 or 91. Um, I had a good friend uh, that had their debut uh, on cassette, or I'm sorry, on a uh, CD. Um, he let me borrow it to check out, and I think I had it for like a year and a half. Uh, he kept asking for it back, and uh, um, I kept telling him I forgot it, you know, that type of stuff. But uh, uh, and, and just fell in love with the band. Uh, this is a really good live set. Uh, actually, a ton of bricks is playing in the background, and now every time I hear that song, I think of Scott Waters because uh, that's one of the. Um, one of the first albums he sent me was the cover album, uh, and, and that song just kind of resonated with me right away. So, uh, Metal Church Live, though, great uh, live set. Highly recommend picking this one up. Let's see if it says when this one was recorded. 86. Oh, so very nice. And it's a collection, so it was different times throughout 86, but uh, uh, really them at their best. Uh, so let's just, like I said, this will be a what's spinning. Um, I've been buying a lot of CDs lately, um, and it's not because I've been out looking for CDs. Um, one of my local record stores that I hit usually once uh, every week or two weeks, um, some guy's been slowly selling off his metal collection, and it's really stuff that's hard to find um, unless you go out looking for it on the internet. And... Uh, I've just been finding some killer stuff, stuff that I used to have in my CD collection that I had in my cassette collection, and then stuff that I've never heard. Um, so uh, it's been really nice picking this stuff. And the nice thing about that record store is because they're not a CD store, they sell the stuff for cheap. So I, you know, a lot of these, a lot of the stuff I already have that I've pulled out, but uh, a lot of this newer stuff that I bought, I bought for five bucks. Um, and like I said, I've just been finding some killer stuff. So. Uh, Let's just kind of jump in. Um, this first one is actually a new album from this year. Um, this was this is an album I was hearing a lot of good stuff about, and I was really excited about it. Uh, and then I listened to the album and was completely disappointed. Um, this is a band that I, I liked from the very beginning when they they came out, um, and they've just kind of gone the uh, uh, the popular music route, the popular metal route, and I just don't like the stuff they're putting out anymore. I've heard this one kind of harkens back to older days. I didn't find that to be the case. But this is uh, Battles from In Flames. Um, I really liked, uh, you know, Jester Race, all that stuff, all the way through Reroute to Remain. With Reroute to Remain, they started to change their sound a little bit, but they still had that uh, melodic death metal sound. Um, and the melodic death metal is just completely gone now, uh, which is sad because this is one of the bands that created that sound, you know. Um, so... But again, just I was disappointed in this. And you know, maybe I'll, I'll give it a spin in, in a year or so and dig it, but uh, you know, I listened to it a couple times and it, just nothing, nothing keyed in with me. Uh, next up, uh, this is one that I just recently picked up from that uh, uh, collection. This is one that I've had before on cassette. This is my least favorite album from the band, but it's still an amazing album. Uh, this one is uh, Green from Forbidden. And I, Forbidden's just a killer band. If you haven't checked them out, uh, definitely recommend checking them out, especially their earlier albums. But uh, it was still uh, nice to give this one a spin, too. Uh, next up, uh, not metal, uh, but this is one of my all-time favorite artists. If you've, you've watched my videos, uh, you've seen me talking about him dozens of times over the last few years. But this is the, uh, the most recent uh, best of. This is the, the double CD set uh, Legacy by Bowie. Um... This was a, a, a promo copy. Uh, so there's a 2016 mix of Life of, of Life on Mars. I didn't notice any glaring differences between that and every other mix of Life on Mars, and that was one of the big selling points that they that they had on this. Um, the first album, his early stuff, I love every single song. Um, one thing that's kind of cool is is they did uh, bring in some not so popular, some deeper cuts. Uh, you know, so uh, this is not America with Pat Metheny is on here. 
um, Jump They Say, uh, uh, Hello Space Boy with the Pet Shop Boys. I mean, there are some deeper cuts on here. They're just not deeper cuts that I really like. Um, so of the second disc, I only like about uh, a third of it. it. Only a third of it's stuff that I listen to. So, uh, I mean, I got this, uh, you know, I got it used. So I got it for a good price. But, uh, you know, if you've already got all the Bowie stuff, I don't, I, don't, I don't know that I would go out and grab that unless you just feel that you have to have it. Um, next up, this is an album that I already had, but I ran across this deluxe edition again for five or six bucks. It was part of that collection. Um, one of my favorite melodic death metal uh, bands, not just because they're melodic death, they add in a lot of different elements. There's power metal in there, there's thrash in there. Um, the guitars are absolutely phenomenal on all of their albums. But this is uh, Relentless, Reckless, Forever from uh, Children of Bodom. Uh, and this one came with a DVD with a, a bunch of music videos, uh, some live videos, uh, and then a couple guitar lessons from uh, Alexi. Uh, next up, so this band is a band, so when they first came out, I just wasn't a fan. Um, I think I've said before, I, I was really late to the party on doom metal. I shouldn't say I was late to the party. I just really didn't get into doom metal. Uh, back in the 90s, I wanted uh, faster, more aggressive. I, you know, I was, I was playing in bands at the time. Um, I, was get, I was really into death metal, which was still burgeoning at the time. Uh, black metal was just starting to show up. I was getting into some of those bands. And uh, just the slower uh, sound of doom metal just didn't do it for me until probably the early 2000s. Um, and I, I got one of this band's uh, earlier albums and, and just didn't like it. Uh, it was just uh, too slow for me. Um, now, one thing I did like from that era was the sludge stuff that was starting to come out. So the, the COC, the crowbar type of sound, uh, which was still slower but uh, heavier. And uh, this album of theirs reminds me of COC. There's some other, some, some psychedelic in there and stuff too. And I actually think they call this psychedelic metal. Um, but I really dug this album. And uh, now I'm actually going back and trying to find their earlier stuff because now that I am really heavy into Doom, uh, I do want to check out the earlier stuff. But this is a uh, plastic green head. Uh, from Trouble. And a lot of people consider this to be their worst album. I think it's a great album. Um, you do hear that that, that psychedelic uh, sound on a bunch of the songs, but that's a sound I dig. Um, there is that uh, that sludginess that you get from uh, Pepper Keenan era um, COC. Uh, you hear a lot of that in there too, which was probably why I liked this so much back in the 90s. But uh, um, and I think this was their last album before this band split up. I think they came back in another iteration a few years later. I think they're, they're together again. Um, I don't think it's the same band members, but uh, Plastic Green Head from Trouble. Uh, next up, I've been running across a lot of, of, again, with that collection. I think I picked up six or seven different Halloween um, albums. Some of the stuff I already had on uh, vinyl, but I wanted to uh, grab it on CD as well. Uh, this is uh, Halloween Live, I Want Out. This was from my, I believe, Dublin. Let's see if it says it. I know it was from the UK, but... Uh, and actually, what's funny... I don't see it in here. Oh, here we go. Uh, Scotland. Recorded in uh, Edinburgh, 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 uh, Scotland in 88, except for I Want Out, which is recorded in Manchester in November of 88. Uh, what's funny is the same time that this came out, they also released live in England, uh, which is basically the same album. I mean, there's, I think there's one track difference, but it's, it's pretty much the same album, but uh, still uh, a great live set from Halloween. Well, let's see, next up. Um, so I've slowly been getting into this guy, well, this band, this specifically this band, but uh, um, I really didn't get him back in the 80s and early 90s. I've talked about this before. I had a roommate who was uh, absolutely in love with this band, and I just didn't get it. Um, and it's slowly starting to grow on me, especially the Merciful Fate stuff, but this is uh, In the Shadows. Um, I find that with the Merciful Fate stuff, he uses a little bit different voice. Um, he still hits those really high peaks, uh, 
but he kind of sings with a little bit lower voice. And I haven't heard all the King Diamond stuff, so I don't know if he did it with King Diamond, but of the King Diamond stuff that I've had, I have, I've got three or four of the CDs. Um, it seems the Merciful Fate was a little bit different voice. But uh, this is uh, after Merciful Fate uh, got back together in the 90s. This is 93. I think this is the first one, if I remember correctly. I may be wrong on that. Um, but uh, really good album. I, I really like this, this Merciful Fate and King Diamond stuff from the 90s. Uh, I know everybody loves the early 80s stuff, and um, I think it's okay. Um, there's a couple songs that I really dig, but uh, uh, his stuff from the 90s is, is really what kind of resonates with me. And uh, maybe it's because it's a little more polished. Uh, you know, usually I like the really raw stuff. Uh, for some reason, I don't like his early, uh, his, his early albums as much, though. But uh, regardless, uh, In the Shadows, just really good King Diamond. Next up... Um, definitely probably the most important album in power metal um, definitely one of the more important albums in metal as a whole uh, I absolutely love this album beginning to end I already had this on CD and vinyl uh, but this is the extended ver or the expanded version with four extra tracks uh, so I went ahead and grabbed this and it, it sounds awesome they did a great job with it uh, but this is uh, Keeper of the Seven Keys, Part 1. And then the bonus tracks are, uh, uh, let's see, Victim of Fate, which was a B-side. Uh, a, a remix of Starlight. Uh, a Little Town, or A Little Time, an alternate version. And then the video edit of Halloween. Um, if you haven't checked this album out, go out and get a copy right away. Um, amazing, amazing album. Uh, next up, I was really happy to find this. Um, I've been looking for this on CD for quite some time. I've had it on cassette forever, but uh, and I'd love to find it on vinyl. I just never see it for a decent price, and the few times I have seen it on vinyl, it, it's just trash. Um, definitely my favorite album from this band, and, and just a, a favorite of mine in general, but this is uh, Refuge Denied from Sanctuary. I love the vocals on this album. Unfortunately, the really high vocals uh, were dropped uh, for the subsequent albums. I actually picked up all three of their albums uh, the day I found this. And uh, uh, I love all three of them, but this is definitely the, the best one. This was actually produced by Dave Mustaine, too, which I didn't know uh, until I was looking through the, the liner notes uh, a couple months ago when I first uh, grabbed this. But uh, another one that should be in every Metalheads collection. Uh, next up, uh, keeping on with Hi Can Kai Hansen, Hi Hansen, <laughs> with uh, Kai Hansen from Halloween. This is his uh, band Gamma Ray. Um, for later stuff, I, I, I love the early Halloween stuff, and, and um, I love the later Halloween stuff. They have some stuff in the middle that kind of fell off for me. Um, but once Kai Hansen uh, went to Gamma Ray, um, I, I've, I've kind of preferred Gamma Ray over Halloween. Um, this is another great album. I don't like what they did with it. Uh, Land of the Free. Uh, it, it, it's called Land of the Free 2. You know, playing off Land of the Free, which is one of his uh, biggest albums. Um, uh, this is... Uh, oh, I just gave it to you. It's Land of the Free 2 from Gamma Ray. And this one says Limited First Edition. I don't know what that means because it's the same SPV pressing. I don't know if maybe the other one wasn't in a... Uh, it was in a regular cassette or uh, was in a regular plastic case, but uh, I don't see any extra songs or anything like that. Um, it's still a, a really good album. Um, you know, when they take a, a classic album, I, and, and I think uh, Halloween did it too. I think they did a Keeper of the Seven Keys Part 3 uh, a few years back, and it, it just annoys me when they play off that, you know? trying to make money, trying to get you to buy it, thinking it's going to be as good as those earlier ones. They're even going to revisit the sound from the earlier ones. Um, this next one I pulled out because of Scott Waters. Um, he had, We were talking one night, and he had just purchased the CD, or I'm sorry, the album of one of these shows, had uh, shared it with me, and it made me pull this out and give it another spin. This is uh, Vivas or Vivas um, from Death. It's a two-CD set. Um, this, I believe, was Death's final tour. Um, shortly after this, Death went on hiatus. And uh, 
Chuck started doing playing guitar full time and control tonight, which he had been doing for a couple years before this, but they had just signed a major label deal. This is 98, 99. You saw Control Denied's album come out, and then they toured for that. And he ended up passing away in 2001. Um, so um, I believe this was the last tour. But this one is live in L.A., and this two is live in uh, Eindhoven. Both shows are great shows. Uh, a lot of the same songs. You know, it's the same tour. But uh, what I find interesting about this is on his final album, uh, the final Death album, uh, Chuck had changed his vocals. He went to this really high... Um, screaming type vocal or not screaming but just a high pitch vocal as opposed to the low death growl that he had always done before um, and a lot of people didn't like it I didn't like it when I first heard it, it and it kind of grew on me I, I still like his voice from earlier albums but what's interesting about this is that you know he uses that voice for the entire shows um, so to hear a lot of the older songs with that voice is I think it's kind of cool um, if you see this grab it on CD um, the band sounds absolutely amazing. This is Death at their best. They sound phenomenal. Um, the only downside of this that I have is the guitars sound kind of thin. And it's just the recording. Um, they still sound really good. It's just thin uh, compared to the vocal and the drums. It's kind of drowned out a little bit. But uh, uh, now, both of these, Live in LA and Live in uh, Eindhoven, have both been released uh, separately on vinyl. And they put this set together. Um, and then last year, they released Vivas or Vivas, however you want to pronounce it, uh, as an album. But from what I've seen, it's only the Live in Eindhoven, which doesn't really make sense to me. They are, Live in Eindhoven was already out. So, uh, you know, I, I was looking forward to grabbing that. But now that I, and I probably still will. I mean, let's be honest. But uh, I was kind of disappointed to find out that while this the CD version is, is both shows, it looks like the... Uh, the vinyl version is just the second show. Um, next up, this is just, this album blows me away. And, and this singer is one of the best. Um, he's got one of the best metal voices there is. Uh, this is Rob Rock, Rage of Creation. This was his, uh, his solo debut uh, prior to this. And then years later when he rejoined, um, he was in a band called Impelitary. Um, if you've watched my videos, I've talked about them a number of times. Last year, their uh, the most recent Impelitary album, which he sings on, uh, was one of my top five of the year last year, if I remember correctly. Um, killer, killer album. Uh, you got Roy Z on guitar, who absolutely shreds. Um, a lot of people thought after Impelitary, after leaving Impelitary. Um, that his music would kind of fall off because uh, Impelitary is an amazing shredder. And uh, Roy Z, I mean, he's right there. He just he does just as good. And then a, another cool uh, thing on this album is uh, there are uh, two songs, I believe, that have Jakey Lee on here uh, from Ozzy as well. Um, so very cool album though. If you see anything by Rob Rock uh, or Impelitary, uh, I, I recommend grabbing it. Like I said, he's a phenomenal vocalist. And the guitar work is uh, just absolutely phenomenal. And then, uh, let's see, I think we're going to end it with, uh, actually we'll do these last two. Um, this was one of my favorites from last year. I would say top 15. Um, it did make it into my top 10. Um, I've showed the vinyl. Uh, my vinyl copy came with a signed CD booklet. Um, so I, And I finally ran across a used copy. So this is the, the Concrete Confessional from Hate Breed. And then it's got the, uh, the signed cover there. Here's the one that uh, was in the CD. but uh, And then last but not least, this was one of my favorite albums of the last year. This is definitely top five. Um, this band just keeps getting, I don't want to say getting better and better. They just keep putting out amazing, amazing albums. And this is right there. Uh, this is Brotherhood of the Snake by Testament. Um, I love everything about this album. This is the uh, really killer artwork. Uh, Testament and Anthrax, uh, and in and the year before with Exodus and uh, Overkill. I, 
the 80s thrash bands have just been killing it. Um, even, you know, I'll give a quick honorable mention to the new Metallica. I, I really like it. It doesn't make my top 10. It may make my top 15, but I even think that's kind of a stretch. I, I just haven't been given it the love um, that I've been given to the Testament, to the Anthrax. Uh, now we have a new album coming out from uh, Overkill in a couple months. We have a new album coming out from Creator. Um, Sodom just had a new album come out, uh, or it's about to come out. I, I don't remember, but I've heard nothing but good things about Um it really is awesome to see these bands just putting out killer albums again. So, And actually, I'll show one more just because I got it here. This is one I, I pulled out yesterday to listen to. Uh, this is Ghost Reveries from uh, Opeth. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it. I've got the newest Opeth album. I was going to do a review on it, and then I just, I just don't like it. I, I think it's absolute garbage. Um, it really is the height of pretentiousness. Um, They've completely left their metal sound, which is fine. You know, there's been a lot of bands that over the years have progressed and, and gone the more progressive route or gone the more technical route, and I generally like that. And I like it through their last album. Their last album still had the metal elements. There were clean vocals, and I'm fine with that. You know, you don't need the death metal vocals that you had in the earlier albums like this. And, and I mean, even, even here, very progressive sounding. And that's something I always loved about Opus. But... And, and it drives me nuts. I see all these people doing top 10 lists and they list it in their top 10 metal albums. There is one song with one riff that's metal and there is no metal in the, the rest of the album. The rest of the album is a mix of um, 70s style prog mixed with 70s style um, jazz fusion. Um, I just don't like it. The, the title track, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. I don't have the CD in front of me. I, I dig. I dig the title track and that's the only one with a metal riff. And then from there it just goes downhill for me. But uh, And actually that's what made me pull this one out because I love this album. Um, so it made me pull this one out and give this one a spin. This is the, the deluxe edition that came out a few years ago. Uh, the cool thing about this, um, this has a, a documentary about the making of, which they've done on a bunch of their deluxe editions. But this also has a uh, a 5.1 uh, DVD audio mix of the album, which sounds really killer too. Um, so if you run across this, definitely worth checking out. And actually, I mean, just the album in general, absolutely phenomenal, and I highly recommend. But uh, um, yeah, I mean, their new album, I, I just think it's garbage. Um, so we'll end off on a nice negative note. But uh, uh, take care, everybody. I'll have a new uh, vinyl update coming pretty soon. Take care.